In a world where science and faith often collide, the question of existence looms large. What if the very building blocks of life are more than just random accidents in a vast universe? What if beneath the surface of evolutionary theory lies a hidden design waiting to be uncovered? Join us as we dive deep into the heart of biological arguments that challenge the existence of a creator. We'll explore the claims of evolution, a biogenesis, and the mysteries of consciousness, unraveling the fabric of what many believe to be a purely naturalistic world. Are you ready to question everything you think you know? Buckle up, because the journey is about to begin. Number one, evolution and natural selection explain life without God. You see, the argument is that evolution through natural selection provides a fully naturalistic explanation for the diversity of life, negating the need for a designer. Random mutations and survival of the fittest can lead to complex life forms without divine intervention. However, theistic scientists like Dr. Stephen Meyer argue that evolution may explain micro-level changes, but it does not explain the origin of life or the specific conditions necessary for life to evolve. The fine-tuning of physical constants and the precise environment needed for life strongly suggests design. Then there's irreducible complexity. Certain biological systems, such as the bacterial flagellum, exhibit irreducible complexity, meaning that all parts must function together or the system would fail. This complexity points to intelligent design, as it is unlikely to have arisen from random mutations alone. And of course, there is origin of information. You see, the DNA code contains a vast amount of information, which atheistic evolution cannot explain. Dr. Stephen Meyer argues that the origin of complex information systems requires a designer, as unguided processes cannot produce meaningful, organized information. Number two, abiogenesis, life arising from non-life. You see, atheists will argue that life originated from non-life through natural chemical processes. This is called abiogenesis. Over millions of years, Simple molecules combine to form more complex structures, eventually leading to the first living organisms. No God is required for this process, they say. Well, there's a problem, the improbability of abiogenesis. Renowned chemist Dr. James Tour has argued that the probability of life arising from non-life through random chemical reactions is astronomically low. He emphasizes that science has not been able to demonstrate a viable pathway for abiogenesis despite decades of research. Then there's the intelligent cause for life. You see, the complexity of the simplest cell is far beyond what random chemical reactions can achieve. Dr. Meyer contends that life's origin cannot be explained by naturalistic means alone. Instead, it points to a guiding intelligence behind the initial formation of biological life. Number three, the fossil records show gradual change, not sudden creation. The atheistic worldview will say that the fossil record shows a gradual progression of species over time supporting Darwinian evolution, and refuting the idea of sudden creation by a divine being. Transitional fossils demonstrate how species have evolved from common ancestors. Here's the problem. The Cambrian explosion presents a major challenge to Darwinian evolution. Over 500 million years ago, a vast array of complex animal forms appeared suddenly in the fossil record with no clear evolutionary predecessors. This rapid appearance of life is more consistent with an intelligent designer than with the gradual Darwinian evolution. Then there's the lack of transitional fossils. You see, contrary to evolutionary expectations, many gaps remain in the fossil record. Paleontologists like Dr. Gunter point out that there are very few credible examples of transitional forms, leading many to reconsider the adequacy of Darwin's gradualistic model. Number four, vestigial organs prove evolution. You see, the atheistic argument is that vestigial organs like the appendix and the tailbone, are leftover remnants of evolutionary history and no longer serve a purpose. This is evidence for evolution and against intelligent design, as a perfect creator would not create useless organs. However, recent scientific research has shown that many organs, once considered vestigial, do in fact have important functions. For instance, the appendix has been found to play a role in the immune system, particularly in gut health. The discovery that vestigial organs have purposes support the argument for design rather than random purposeless evolution. Then there's the argument from function. Even if some organs no longer serve their original function, this does not prove they are useless or that they were not originally designed with a purpose. 
William Dembski suggests that what appears to be vestigial may instead reflect our limited understanding of their original or current functions. Number five, junk DNA in non-coding regions. The atheistic argument is that the majority of human DNA consists of non-coding regions, once referred to as junk DNA. If an intelligent designer created life, it is unlikely that they would include vast sections of useless genetic material. This supports the evolutionary argument that life is the result of undirected processes. However, there's a couple problems with that. First, you see, the ENCODE project and other studies have shown that large portions of non-coding DNA are functional, playing roles in gene regulation, embryonic development, and other critical processes. This discovery refutes the idea that non-coding DNA is simply junk and aligns with the notion of purposeful design. Then there's hidden complexity. Even if some DNA does not directly code for proteins, the discovery of regulatory functions demonstrates that what was once considered junk is actually integral to life. This suggests a higher level of complexity, which theistic scientists argue is indicative of design rather than random mutations. Number six, bad design in nature. The atheistic argument is that if a perfect and omnipotent God created life, we would expect perfect design. However, there are many examples of poor design in nature, such as the panda's thumb or the human eye's blind spot. This suggests that life evolved through trial and error, not through intentional design. Well, there's a couple counter-arguments to that. Number one, the best possible design under constraints. You see, theistic evolutionists argue that what may appear to be bad design often makes sense when we consider the constraints of biology and physics. For example, the human eye's structure allows for superior depth perception, and the blind spot is a trade-off for having a large visual field. Moreover, what we consider bad design might reflect our lack of understanding of the broader system. Number two, optimize trade-offs. Many so-called examples of poor design are actually examples of optimized trade-offs. Lee Strobel and other Christian apologists argue that God designed life to function efficiently within the constraints of a fallen world leading to designs that balance multiple biological factors. Number seven, morality can evolve without God. You see, the argument goes, morality can be explained through evolutionary biology. Cooperative behaviors and altruism may have evolved because they promote survival within a group. This negates the need for a divine lawgiver to explain human ethics. Again, there's a couple counter-arguments here. Objective morality. Theistic thinkers like C.S. Lewis argue that the existence of objective moral values requires a moral lawgiver. While evolutionary processes may explain some behaviors, they cannot account for objective moral truth, such as the wrongness of murder or the goodness of love, which transcends survival advantages. And number two, evolutionary ethics is insufficient. Alvin Platinga points out that if our moral beliefs were solely shaped by evolution, they would only promote survival, not necessarily truth. Therefore, evolution alone cannot account for our sense of objective right and wrong, suggesting the need for a divine source of morality. Number eight, no need for God in neurobiology. The argument says that advances in neurobiology suggest that consciousness, emotion, and even religious experiences have been explained by brain activity. There is no need to invoke the soul or God to explain human behavior. But there is a couple things to consider. Firstly, the hard problem of consciousness. Despite advances in neurobiology, the hard problem of consciousness remains unsolved. Philosopher David Chalmers and other theistic scholars argue that while we can map brain activity, we cannot explain why subjective experiences exist. The existence of consciousness points to something beyond points to something beyond mere physical processes. And then number two, spiritual experiences in neuroscience. Studies on religious experiences show that while brain activity correlates with spiritual experiences, Correlation does not equal causation. Dr. Andrew Newberg argues that neurobiology can explain the how of experiences, but not the why or the ultimate source, leaving room for divine influence. You see, in summary, while atheistic arguments often rely on naturalistic explanations for biological phenomena, Christian and theistic scholars provide robust counterarguments by highlighting the gaps in evolutionary theory the improbability of life originating without intelligent guidance, and the evidence for design within the complexity of life itself. So, as you ponder the arguments presented today, ask yourself, could it be that the evidence for a creator lies not just in the intricate details of biology,
but also in the very act of questioning itself? If you found value in this video, consider sharing your thoughts below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep searching, keep questioning, and let the journey lead you to the truth.